Assault pack, 15.6 pounds. Chest rig, 15.1 pounds. Rifle, with a magazine in the gun, 11.8 pounds. Plates, 14.8 pounds. Helmet, 4.9 pounds. Ruining your perfectly good joints for the rest of your life, well that's just the price of doing business. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we are back with another edition of American Minuteman Gear, one of our longest running series here on the channel, and uh, I am happy to be back. I hope you're happy to be back, because today we're gonna talk about weight limits. Uh, all this stuff, all the gear, right, that we've talked about in this series, I got a bunch of gear laid out on the table here that you can't see, but all of this stuff, it weighs something, right? There's, there's a weight component to it. And you, as a human being, only have a limited amount of capacity. There's only so much weight you can carry. And maybe you've thought about this, maybe you haven't, but the weight of the gear that you carry has a large effect on your performance. And so we're gonna talk about that. The United States Army considers anything over 45% of your body weight to be in excessive load. Now, uh, that's comical for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first off being that the US Army in general, as far as I know, blows right by those numbers all the time and has their guys carry excessive loads all the time. Uh, and that's why there's so many veterans with uh, knee, joint, hip issues uh, because they've been carrying these super heavy loads uh, for their, their entire career, right? And that just, that wears on your body after a while. It's not necessarily your muscles that are the problem, it's your joints and their inability to accommodate that much weight over that long of a time. The second thing is, uh, so I have cut weight, right? I'm down to about 205 now, depending on the day, down, balance between like 204, 206, and uh, 205. 45% of 205 pounds is 92.25 pounds. So theoretically, I should be able to carry up to 92 pounds uh, without hitting the excessive load point, right? Whatever that means. If you're a tiny guy, you're coming in at like 150, 140, whatever. 140, I did the math, and or one, yeah, 140, I did the math, and it is 63 pounds, I believe is what it comes out to be, right? That's not that much weight as we're gonna see as we're gonna talk about here. So I write out the gate at the 45% number. I consider that uh, maybe not arbitrary, but even that is high, right? Me to carry 90 pounds of gear. And you gotta remember that 90 pounds number, it's not just your ruck, right? It's all the stuff. So it's your boots, it's your clothes, it's your knee pads, it's your eyeglasses, it's your ear pro, it's your hat or helmet or whatever, right? It's all the stuff that you carry and that stuff adds up pretty quick. So I consider that 90 pound number even high for me to run around in 90 pounds of gear. Can I carry 90 pounds of gear on me? Yeah, sure, I can. For how long? Not quite sure. Am I gonna be able to go move, make a five mile movement and then effectively fight at the end of that? Or if I'm in the middle of a really long movement, like let's say a multiple day movement, and I get ambushed on you know, a day and a half in after I've been rucking, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 miles, am I gonna be able to effectively fight then, right? After I've been exhausted and worn down? I don't know, probably not very well, that's for sure. So I think it's important to start to take these weight considerations in because it's not just can I move the weight? Sure, you can move the weight, but go ahead, get out, ruck those 10 miles uh, with that 30 pound pack on and let me know how that goes for you. Let me know how long it takes for your feet to recover from the blisters, how long it takes your legs to recover from the strain, right? That's just a 35 pound pack. That's not with your rifle and your plates and whatever. Go do it with all that stuff on and then let me know how that goes. There is a cost to carrying all this weight. And it's not just necessarily the long-term joint impact stuff, although that is a problem. It's the immediate recovery of, like I said, blisters, muscle pain, etc. And if you have to do that multiple days in a row, how are you gonna survive that? Now, there's one objection that says, well, hey Dylan, just get stronger, lift more, you know, work out more, be better, and then that won't be such a big deal. And I would say, okay, there's some truth to that. We all need to be uh, more physically fit. There's, there's, no, there's no argument there. However, no matter what, whatever you carry is gonna wear, wear on you. The weight is gonna wear on you. That's true no matter what happens. So it doesn't matter how fit you are necessarily, 
What matters is that the more stuff you carry, the more tired and the more exhausted you'll get. And again, remember, it's not just moving it from point A to point B. It's maybe having to fight in the middle or at the end or at the beginning or whatever. There's maybe some kind of fight involved there and that is especially exhausting. And when you've already been worn down by carrying a bunch of stuff and you don't have any gas left in the tank, that's not gonna help you out either. And it doesn't matter how fit, no matter how fit you are, there's still gonna be a wear factor. So the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to tell you how much all my kit weighs, right? The purpose of this video is to get you thinking about weight and how much it is that you're carrying. I weighed my stuff. If I carry just my plates, my helmet, my chest rig, and my rifle, just that, no, no other sustainment gear, right? I, I got a liter of water on my chest rig, but no other sustainment gear, that's over 45 pounds of kit. Now you could say, oh, again, well, Dylan, you know, you have 90 pound limit, so, you know, it's only half, you can carry 45 pound pack on that, on top of that. And I would say, ha, huh, good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. I'm not gonna do that. So again, you have to start considering what is, what is your weight limit? Is, is that a hard number? Is it a flux number, like 45%? Again, these numbers come from fit 19 year olds in the army, right? That, that's where we're pulling these numbers from. You are probably not in peak physical condition, although you'd like to be, right? And you have to decide. If you're an overweight dude and you're coming in at three, 300 pounds, does that mean you can carry 150 pounds worth of kit? No, no it does not. Because you're probably not super fit and that, that fat to muscle ratio just isn't there for you in order to be able to accommodate that much gear, right? So body weight is somewhat of an imperfect measurement. We need to take these things into consideration. And in my mind, there's some kind of hard limit of, it's somewhat arbitrary, but like 80 pounds. Anything above 80 pounds is just too much. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how strong you are. If you're carrying more than 80 pounds of stuff around, that's a lot of stuff. And again, especially when it comes to fighting. The other argument is, oh, hey, Dylan, you know, you can drop a rock, it's not a big deal. Like, we'll just, you know, when you take contact, that's why you drop rocks. And I'd say, okay, but again, as an American Minuteman, are you gonna be able to drop kit? Because most likely you're not sticking around for a long-term engagement when China invades or whatever. Uh, you're sticking around to move and groove. So you can't, don't necessarily have the luxury, probably, of being able to drop kit, because you're gonna shoot and scoot. So you're still gonna have to carry and fight in all the stuff you carry, probably, depending on your different SOPs and tactics and how you decide to run it, you do you. Uh, but what I'm saying is, if we're assuming that you're gonna carry and fight in everything that you, that you have, you're not dropping rocks, you're not stashing stuff here, what is it that you really wanna carry? So again, I hope the purpose of this video is to get you to think, what do I really need? Ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain, right? What is it that I really need in order to be effective? What can I cut? Do I need to carry four AA batteries or can I only carry two? Do I need to carry you know, six uh, CR123s or can I get away with three? Like start thinking in terms of every little bit that you can cut off. What's this buckle on this Milserp pack that I got? Do I really need this? No, cut it, move, gone. Start trimming things down. Start thinking about how you can cut little fractions of an ounce because that all adds up. If you can shave five pounds off your loadout, believe it or not, that's a big deal. And that's gonna get you uh, in a place where you can start to actually benefit from that. The other thing I would point out is when it comes to the big ruck, right? The big ruck. I, right now, have a somewhat arbitrary personal limit of 30 pounds. I think carrying anything in that big ruck that weighs more than 30 pounds will not behoove you. Again, based on everything we just laid out, based on the fact that it's not just the ruck. If it's a 30 pound ruck, it's my chest rig and it's my rifle, I'm coming in at about 55, 60 pounds right there. I mean, that's not counting my clothes or, or my helmet. If it's a helmet, I mean, now we're up to easily over 60 pounds. And that's just in, again, ruck, chest rig, rifle. And you go out and you move around in that for a while and it's gonna get tiring. You're gonna get tired even though we're not even talking about plates, right? So in my mind, that's kind of the limit for my ruck. And at this point going forward, I'm always gonna try to keep my ruck under that amount because uh, I think the wear and tear factor isn't worth it when you get above that number. That's me, you do you. Again, you think about what your number would be. But get out there, experience this stuff, move yourself under load over time, and you're gonna start to find those limits. I do like getting a, uh, just a little, this is a cheapy off Amazon 
uh, scale. It's used to weigh your luggage, right? And this is what I use to weigh all my kit. It doesn't give the most precise readings in the world, but it gives me a good idea so that I can start to write these numbers down and figure out objectively what's that objective number for me of how much I'm willing to carry, how much, wh what gets me past that point of the wear and tear just isn't worth it anymore. And again, what do I really need? What gear can I cut? What gear do I have on here? When you start, like this is a good example right here. With this big pack, right, I put these external pouches on here. These are all coming off uh, because, one, I don't need to have extra capacity to add a bunch of stuff that, again, I need to stay under that 30 pound limit anyway. So I should be able to fit it in the main compartment if I can't, probably don't need it. And additionally, that pouch, that pouch has weight, right? I don't know what that pouch specifically weighs, but I'm gonna guess around like 12 ounces. Well, I have four of them on there. All of a sudden, hey, now I'm adding, you know, three pounds just in pouches let alone what actually goes in them. So you need to start thinking and being real miserly, real, real Nazi-like about what you are gonna allow on your kit or not in order to understand that you're trying to cut wear and tear off your body so that you can more effectively do the job that you're there to do. One more thing I do wanna add in here is, again, if you're more uh, mechanized, right, you can carry more stuff because you can just leave it in the vehicle. But when it comes time to actually put stuff on you, those weight limits still apply, right? So I might have like a hundred pounds of personal gear in the vehicle, right? With like my overnight rock and maybe some plates and whatever, but I might only walk around in a chest rig and a little assault pack, right? That could happen. And then as I need it, I'll go back and I'll, maybe I'll put the plates on or whatever. So there are options and you can flex in and out depending on how mechanized you're planning on being. However, in general, when that kit goes on your body, that's when my numbers start coming in. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this gets you thinking about weight limits and what your kit weighs. If you've never weighed your kit, I su highly suggest that you go ahead and do that and start getting some completely neutral data of how much your kit weighs. Write those numbers down, think about what you can cut, think about what you can shave, and then go out and move in it and let me know how that works out for you. Because again, the less stuff we carry, the happier you're gonna be, and the more effectively you will fight. Do brave deeds and endure.